Well, <clears throat> blessings on this first day week, and um, I prayed last night, and I prayed about my video yesterday. And one of the comments, a, a, I guess a young lady, but anyway, Candy the Star wrote, and and you don't you t you did touch my heart, you did. I don't hate you. See, this is what you all don't understand that are homosexuals out there. I don't hate you. When I was going through my divorce, my husband kicked me out on the street in the winter time. It was two gay guys that took me into their home and took care of me. And I become friends with them. So, I can't hate you. When I was in need, you were there when the church even turned against me. So, but what you said on this, you said, you pride yourself as wise, but you are foolish. Yes, I, I put that down because it was written in the Bible. That's, that's what God said. I mean, in the Word, that's what he said about people out there that presumes themselves wise, but they are foolish. I have never, ever, ever thought myself as wise. I have problems. I have dyslexia, so I have problems in, in really reading. I have to stop and really look at it and read. And God has helped me with that. Spelling, that's, that's a no-brainer. <clears throat> it's just, I can't, really. Uh, small words, but then... But you know what? That's okay. That's okay. I'm not ashamed. And no, I don't support ge government in in gay marriages. I, I don't support them. I mean, if you really listen to what I said, they're bringing a curse upon their cells on this land, America, by doing this. And each gay person is putting a curse upon their cells and the ministers that marry you. And what touched me is you, you said, you see I was born gay and I was born into a Roman Catholic family that prayed each and every day. For years I begged get to uh, for years I begged got to cure me, to fix me, to save me. But he never did. After time, I realized I was no longer welcome in my church. Once I grew older, I stopped going. You see, the church and God can't change and take away your homosexuality. <clears throat> Let me put it this way. The church can't. The church has come so, so abominable itself. No, it can't help you. It couldn't help me back when I was having problems with a lot of things in my life. In Romans, I have to go back to Romans, what it says. And this is a New Testament, not the Old. I chose to read from the New Testament to show that that sin that was pronounced sin back in the Old Testament is still a sin nowadays. Because it says that um, that God would clean, give them up to their own clean thoughts, the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. It was talking about up above, you know. He, it was talking about them polluting their cells. Right in, in chapter one and twenty-seven and likewise 
Also, the men leaving the nature natural use of woman, burning in their own lust, their lust one towards another, men with men. Working which is unseemly, receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was met. And it's talking about women, you know, with women. I mean, read the whole chapter 1 in Romans. And, and it, it makes it plain. It makes it very plain, you know. For our body is the temple of God. It is the temple of God. And that we have to be responsible for our own actions that we do. Now, if you go to 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 1, it begins. There was sin in the church at this time in Corinthians. The church of Corinthians was in sin. It says... It is reported commonly that there is fornication among you and such fornication as it is not so much as named among the Gentiles that one should have his father's wife. <clears throat> so this boy, this man, this son was having a sexual relationship with his father's wife. And it says, And ye are puffed up and not rather mourn that he that hath done this deed might be taken away from among you. For I verily as absent in body but present in spirit have judged already as though I were present concerning him that hath so done the deed. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ when we are gathered together and my spirit with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ to deliver such a one unto Satan, in other words, turn this man over to Satan, for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of Lord Jesus. Your glory is not good. Know ye not that a little leaven leveleth the whole lump? Purge out therefore the old leaven, that ye may be a new lump, as ye are unleavened for even Christ our Passover is sufficient for us it is sacrifice for us therefore let us keep the feast not with old leaven neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness but with the unleavened bread of sanctity and truth so it's talking about sin in the church Let's go on down to chapter 6 and 7. Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doth is without the body. But he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. That's talking even about homosexuality. The only sexual sexual um, action that God recognizes is between a man and a woman in a marriage. If you are having a sexual relationship outside of marriage with anyone, it is a sin. And that marriage is between a man and a woman, not man with man, not woman with woman. And I guess I know that there are churches that are saying it is okay. But what would Paul say to them? No, it's not okay. The Lutheran and all these churches that let them in and, and okay them is sinning. And they're bringing a curse of God upon themselves. You know, in Deuteronomy... It talks about the curses and, this, and, and the blessings. And if you sin, you place a curse upon your life. And, and especially if you sin against your own body, you're sinning. Well, when you said that you prayed, you prayed, you prayed that God would bring you out of this. 
Well, I said, Father, what do I ta tell her? What can I possibly say with her in her struggle or his struggle? that's out there in a homosexual lifestyle. The young people that are going out there having sex with each other because and the man that runs around on his wife and the wife that runs around on her husband having sex with the other, you're polluting your body. You're polluting your body for the body is the temple of God. So God told me, he says, tell them about your problem as you were growing up. You see, I had problems growing up too. We're all human beings and we all suffer through things. I could blame it on my two brothers who took me out to the barn when I was five years old and sexually molested me, taking my innocence away from me, and introducing me to a world that I should have never been introduced to at such a young age. Whether it was through that or just just the lust of the flesh, I, you know, I can't say. But I had troubles. I had problems with sex when I was growing up. I know how you prayed. With the problems I've had when I was younger, I would cry and plead and say, Father, take these desires away from me. Take them away from me. I, I, I'm just, I want to walk like you. I want to live like you. I, I, I want to be part of you. Because, see, when I was seven, he really did come. He called my name three times. And Yeshua walked up to my side on the left side, and his garment fell across my elbow. And I saw him. I saw him. So I know that there's a God. And I know Yeshua HaMashiach is the Messiah. And he called me out. And he called me as one of his prophets in these last days. And I used to cry when I'd be praying with, with the problems. In my teens, I had to fight the battle of the addiction of sex and of even watching pornography. It was a battle. You know, anything that has to do with the body, a sin in the body, it's like a war being waged. You know, I even used to think when I was younger, I wished I was a man. I was born wrong. I should have been born a man and not a woman. Struggled with that. I used to pray at night, when I wake up, Father, in the morning, let me be a man. Well, it never happened. But it was a battle. It raged within me. And I was at war with myself, fighting, praying, struggling. But I wasn't born a man, I was born a woman. God chose to let me be born as a woman, to fulfill His purpose in life. And when I had problems wanting and desiring sex all the time, it was like a cancer that ate up my soul inside. And I would spend long nights praying and with the Bible, knowing that anything outside of a marriage of a man and woman was a sin. 
See, I chose to read the New Testament about homosexuality and the sexual sins because what was sin in the Old Testament is to its sin now. Yes, there was many things that happened in the Old Testament. You know, women being slow, sold into slavery, things bad happening to them, forced, you know, I, I, even after I become a, a woman in my early 20s, I'd been raped twice by different men. One time beat till I was black and blue. It was seemed like it was always a curse of sex that just pounded at me day and night, trying to tear me down and wear me out. Uh, but I'm telling you that we all have battles. We all have struggles in life. We all have to suffer and pay the price of tearing this flash down and putting it in God's hands to become righteous. Is it easy? No. It's not easy. Not by a long shot. Now that I'm 69, the struggles have become <sighs> mute. I wished I could have felt then like I feel now and had the victory won then like I have now. But I fought. And I wouldn't give up because, see, maybe I was lucky, maybe I was cursed, uh, you know, maybe I was blessed, maybe I was cursed. But it's because, see, I knew that there was a God, 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 and I knew and I saw Yeshua HaMashiach. So I knew, and there was times when I was younger, I would cry. Why can't I just be like everybody else? Why can't I just be human? Why, why, why do I have to go through this? Why do I have to suffer this? Why, why do I have to struggle and lay on the floor in a ball and cry and plead that God would take this thing out of me. It was a hard struggle. And I have still struggles today with really other things. But in the sacrifice that we have to pay sometimes, the sacrifice of laying down the flesh for Him and saying, No, I will not do this. I will not pollute my body with sin. But I do know that I am pressing on to the mark of the high calling. I'm pressing on knowing that what I will receive in the end for all the sacrifice, for all the tears I've shed, is worth far more than the cost I had to pay. Homosexuals lifestyle is a sin and it is cursed by God and God can change you I know 
after many tears and long years, I mean years, years, years of fighting and suffering with an addiction that that just wanted to destroy my life and would try to drive me to go out and do things and I'd have to fight it. I'd have to fight it with everything in me. And it seemed like Satan would bring some person into my life, some man into my life, that would try to tempt me to do what is not acceptable to God. And it would take everything within me to walk away from that. No, I'm not perfect. I fought many battles. And I have many battle scars within my heart. I'm fighting to keep myself pure for Him. Have I failed? Sometimes, yes. And then I would cry all the more and, and the, the disgust with myself. We all have to fight a battle. We all have to because we are in the flesh. And God does not change. He doesn't. What was sin back then is sin now. What will curse you and cause you to go to hell then will curse you and go to hell now. I don't condemn you, but He condemns you, as He condemned me when I did anything I was not supposed to do. Many, many nights I would weep and cry and ask the Father, please take these desires from me. Please take them away. It is hard, but He's there with me, and He's seen my heart's desire. He's seen. I have come at peace in the later years of my life. He's given me peace. But I still have a temper that I deal with, that I have to put in his hands to control. We all must suffer as Christ suffered. And our suffering is in obedience to him, fighting the desires of this flesh. That Satan keeps saying, it's okay, it's okay. It, you know, God will forgive you. When we come to the end of our journey, and we're still in our sin, God will not forgive us when we draw our last breath. We will stand before Him with all the sin that we're doing upon us and we will have to face him but you see even as you as a homosexual Jesus died for you and you have to choose to come out of that lifestyle and submit yourself to him and will you have to cry sometimes many bitter tears of trying to control the fleshly desires and the lust of the heart? Yes. 
and you will have to turn it over to him and say, I can't do this. I can't do this. It's a war between the spirit and the flesh that's fighting you. Your flesh desires this, but your spirit says, no, it's against God. You're killing me. You're killing me. When you partake of this, you're destroying me. And you're causing me to go to hell in your fleshly lust. I pray for you. I pray for you all. I hate none of you. I, I do not hate any homosexual. I grieve for them because I've had my problems in sex. Not as far as homosexuality, but you know what? When your flesh burns with lust, I don't care if it's for man for man or woman for woman or man for a woman or what when that lust is burning within your heart and in your flesh it is a war that's going on a war that you must fight and yield to the father and sometimes it takes days getting on the floor and saying i will not I will not submit to the lust of the flesh, only to the Spirit of God. I've been there. I know. I wasn't born, per born perfect either. See, I really don't believe people are born homosexual. I believe that there's things that happens in life that will guide a person into whatever lifestyle they, they finally get into. All I can do is pray for you and intercede for you. But if there's any pastor, any minister that says, oh, I've always, you know, I've never had those kind of troubles. You are a liar. We all suffer with fleshly desires. We all suffer with fleshly lust because that's the one thing that Satan can take over, that can control, that can burn us with a fire of the flesh of lust. And it's like a raging fire that has been set within us, burning beyond control. But you see, we must control it. We must take and control our body and our mind and our thought. And we must turn it over to Yeshua HaMashiach and say, I will not surrender to the flesh. Only to you. I don't know if this has helped or not. I, I just don't know. But my desires and my fleshly lust is no more or no less than what you are going through as a homosexual. Because it is a fleshly lust, a fire that's burning in your belly, that's destroying your own life. And Satan put it there. God didn't. But God can put it out. It may take a long time, as with me. Living for Him was not an easy journey. But I will say so for myself, it is a worthwhile journey. Because now I have fully come into knowing His true love. With my body submitted to Him. With at peace with Him. 
no longer having to fight and struggle with that type of flashly lust. He's he just he just taking it. And I praise him. But we must submit to the Father. We must submit to Yeshua HaMashiach. Submit even as we fight the battle of this fire of lust that rages within the flesh. Sis, you just got tired of the battle and decided to walk away. And I thought about doing that many times because I was tired of the battle. Like, okay, I'm just tired of this. Just go ahead and do it. Go, go out and do whatever, you know, that makes me feel good. But then... I'd go, no, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm not, not, no, uh-uh. And there the battle would be going on again. So I did not choose the easier way out. I chose the hard way to fight and stand for him against my own body even. Father, in the name of Yeshua, I, I pray that this has helped somebody. Father, you know I hardly ever talk about the struggles I've had in life with anything. I'm not proud of my struggles, but I am proud that you have delivered me out of my struggles. That you are the deliverer that you take and you control every situation in my life anymore and I praise you and I glorify you thank you father in your holy holy name bless this video to your glory amen and amen I hate you when I was in need you were there when the church even turned against me so but what you said on this, you said, you pride yourself as wise, but you are foolish. Yes, I, I put that down because it was written in the Bible. That's, that's what God said. I mean, in the Word, that's what He said about people out there that presumes themselves wise, but they are foolish. I have never, ever, ever thought myself as wise. I have problems. I have dyslexia, so I have problems. In well, <clears throat> blessings on this first day week. And um, I prayed last night, and I prayed about my video yesterday. And one of the comments, a... A, I guess a young lady, but anyway, Candy the Star wrote, and and you don't you t you did touch my heart, you did. I don't hate you. See, this is what you all don't understand that are homosexuals out there. I don't hate you. When I was going through my divorce, my husband kicked me out on the street in the wintertime. It was two gay guys that took me into their home and took care of me. And I become friends with them. So, I can't hand and really reading. I have to stop and really look at it and read. And God has helped me with that. Spelling that's that's a no-brainer <clears throat> it's just I can't really uh, small words but then but you know what 
that's okay. That's okay. I'm not ashamed. And no, I don't support ge government in in gay marriages. I, I don't support them. I mean, if you really listen to what I said, they're bringing a curse upon their cells on this land, America, by doing this. And each gay person is putting a curse upon their cells and the ministers that marry you. And what touched me is, you, you said, you see, I was born gay, and I was born into a Roman Catholic family that prayed each and every day. For years, I begged, get to, uh, for years, I begged, got to cure me, to fix me, to save me, but he never did. After time, I realized I was no longer welcome in my church. Once I grew older, I stopped going. You see, the church and God can't change and take away your homosexuality. <clears throat> Let me put it this way. The church can't. The church has come so, so abominable itself. No, it can't help you. It couldn't help me back when I was having problems with a lot of things in my life. In Romans, I have to go back to Romans, what it says. And this is a New Testament, not the Old. I chose to read from the New Testament to show that that sin that was pronounced sin back in the Old Testament is still a sin nowadays. Because it says that... Um, that God would clean, give them up to their own clean thoughts, the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. It was talking about up above, you know. He, it was talking about them polluting themselves. 